Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here's your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil Markets. Paris Rapeseed. Since mid-June until October, the market had been trapped between two congestion bands, one below between 4.38 to 4.45 and three quarters, and another one above between 5.13 and three quarters to 5.19 and a half. Now, during this incarceration, the market constructed a head and shoulders pattern, which still looks a lot like a head and shoulders top right now, as well as having an extension to its second shoulder from mid-August until the start of October. I've highlighted the neckline for this head and shoulders top in dark blue on my daily chart, and that's currently at 4.59 and a half. The problem the market suffered during the testing down of this neckline had been the sheer amount of force necessary to push down through this head and shoulders top neckline and try and fulfill targets below. Now what I mean by this is that we not only had the neckline to try and push down through, but nearby was the previously mentioned congestion band between 438 to 445 and three quarters containing the March, April and June 2013 highs at 442 and a quarter, 442 even and 438 respectively. It looked as if prices had finally managed to break lower in early October, but the market turned back up and back into the congestion, and then fell away again, rolled up and fell away, such that right now, prices are this week just emerging below the 438 to 445 and three quarter band. This had not only moved the market away from a break lower into a possible force break lower territory, but also created a small reverse head and shoulders pattern over October and early November, with a neckline based on the very same neckline of the larger June to October head and shoulders top. The so far limited success of the original head and shoulders top pattern. Now in the meantime, there are some key bearish pressures that prices will have to deal with, ones which I detailed six weeks ago and repeat now, and I quote, we have overhead three key potential bearish pressures. They are the declining short medium moving average, currently 441 and a quarter. Then the medium moving average, currently 430, 453 and a quarter. And then the declining long moving average, currently 451 and a half. At least two out of these three are descending to impact the market, and one should not take away from anything from them, especially any efforts to pressure the market from a, above, end of quote. The short medium moving average is now down in amongst the previously mentioned 438 to 445 and three quarter congestion band, and the medium and long moving averages are still heading lower, below the diaphanous 456 and three quarter to 468 and three quarter congestion band to hover over this market. However, none of these three bearish pressures have really made a direct impact on the current market as yet, so we wait. In the meantime, I'll repeat some potential targets below which I laid out eight weeks ago and for the head and shoulders top. Hence, a primary target X would be in the 400 even zone with a secondary hardest reach target X1 down in the 354 even zone. Any move lower towards these would be very, very interesting as we have alternate neckline one, currently at 401 and three quarters, and alternate neckline two, currently at 405 and a quarter, both obstructing the way and both originating back from the old November 2019 to February 2020 head and shoulders top. That's how far back we're looking. They are highlighted in bright red and green respectively. Additionally, there is the December 2020 lower 396 and three quarters, which is also in the way on any development move lower. I would further note that these three supports stopped the market, the fall of this market back in May this year. Now, one final note, it's an observation this time, but it may turn out into the uh, full pattern recognition as such. The late October, the action since late October to date has the makings of a rounded top anchored around the 425 zone. Now more on this as the situation develops. Winnipeg Canola. The recent key pattern here had been the July to late September double top, which we have seen not only play out to both primary and secondary targets, but influence the subsequent patterns until this very day. Then below that, the next pattern was and is 
what I consider to be one of the more important patterns here, the broken bearish Andrews pitchfork, created by the earlier double top from mid-July to late August the move, which is highlighted in bright red on my daily chart. On this last pattern, the market broke up and out of the top side of this pitchfork, but has, to cap, uh, but has yet to capitalize on that pattern. It's really failed overall, specifically over the green highlighted short medium moving average, currently at 693.30, which has been a significant failure on the, on the part of this pattern. However, in the process of this failure, the market created the combination of the October to November reverse head and shoulders continuation pattern, which can also be seen as an ascending triangle. All highlighted those two in dark blue trend lines on my daily chart. It is admittedly not the best looking version of ascending triangle, but it nevertheless is still out there with the neckline of the reverse head and shoulders continuation pattern, currently at 731 even, acting as the flat top side trend line. And the late October uptrend, currently at uh, 726.10, acting as a lower rising trend line. The failure at the testing of the short medium moving average throughout November led to the drop three Fridays ago and the breakout below from the ascending triangle. Prices moved down and onto the broken upper time, currently at 637.90, of the bright red bearish Andrews pitchfork two weeks ago and again last week. Now, my concern last week was this move lower was that it could be seen as a precursor for a move down to the other in the other oil seeds and vegetable oils. My thinking was that such a move could be seen as the market seemingly choosing to try and form a bearish half hesitation over November with potential all, all the way down to even the 580 zone. However, this is not a done deal and I have placed any debt targets below and whilst it is worth considering in the coming days and weeks, it is worth also noting that the June 2021 low at 655.90 has held up prices for the last three weeks. Though the highs are getting lower as we approach, getting lower all the time, a usual bearish sign. Below this June 2021 low is the 2021 low itself at 629.5 and the low of May at 611.20. However, before we start looking down that way down that far, let's look back at the break below the descending triangle and see what and where this leads us. Thus, a primary target was in the 676 zone with a secondary higher to reach target X in the 642 zone. In less than a week after the break lower, the market had reached the primary target, and though it has been hesitating these past three weeks, it has not been that far away from the secondary targets at 692. It seems all to be coming to a cusp. You see, if the market makes this secondary target a reality, I would add this final thought. I am interestingly, in, increasingly interested in knowing if this contact is really an indicator, a leader, if you will, for what other oil seeds and vegetable oils may have to deal with in the short amount of time. Bursa Malaysia crude palm oil. I have said this so, so many times and I'll keep saying it until it is no longer true or valid, but the mid-August to early November 2022, that's right, August to November 2022, well over a year old, mildly bearish shift pitchfork, the one highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart, is still running the show here after so, so much time. This mildly bearish pitchfork guided prices more or less lower, initially in between the upper time, currently at 4.4009, and the middle time, currently at 33.77, then for a while in May and June between the middle time and the lower time, lower time is currently at 27.45, before prices move back up again in between the middle and upper times. The significant patterns within this bearish pitchfork have been the June to September diamond pattern and the late July to late August bearish shift pitchfork. In mid-November, the prices broke up through the upper time of this bearish shift pitchfork, currently at 35.30, as well as a combination of the short medium moving average, currently 37.40, and the recent 50% Fibonacci line at 37.06. The rise continued over the moving, medium moving average, currently at 37.50, and the long moving average, currently at 37.67, breaking the capping action seen there back in mid-October, then up over the purple neckline, currently at 39.06 of the recent reverse head and shoulders pattern, before finally running out of steam on the upside at the February 2011 high at 
and the further con congestion, would you believe, at 39.86. Mid-November, the market made a seeming lopsided horn top and dropped down through all these resistances that had become supports and are now back again as resistances. The drop has been enough that the market reached down to the upper or the broken upper tine, which is why I've kept this broken bearish shift pitchfork still on my daily chart, despite being clearly having potential for retirement. So what now? Well, the last few weeks, i had been curious to see if this market would ski jump down the top of the broken upper tine. Additionally, I suspected if it was not key, then it would be significant to see the action around the recent 50% Fibonacci line at 37.06. Well, so far prices have caused sideways action. As the cost more or less sideways somewhat, rotating around the 50% Fibonacci line at 37.06, with a mess of moving averages on top acting as a cap of sorts, and the newly highlighted bright red late May today uptrend currently at 36.24 acting as a support. Though the lesser Fibonacci line at 35.92, a support zone seen in late October and September, well, that should also be now included into the mix. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Tofpik and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.